This video is intended to show you how you can use the standard normal table or Z table to find probabilities for Z scores. So the first thing that we should do is we should remember what the standard normal distribution looks like. So this is the standard normal distribution. It, remember it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So if we were to draw the standard deviations away from the mean, it would look something like this. And the standard normal table represents the areas to the left of the z-score. So it'll always find the cumulative area. This represents, the table represents our cumulative distribution function or the CDF, the probability of x being less than or equal to a particular value of x. So that means if we want to find the probability that z is less than 1.65, we can draw that on our distribution. It'd be somewhere around right here, 1.65. To the left of that, or less than 1.65, is going to be this area. And so to find that area, all we have to do is find 1.65 on our standard normal table. We can start over here with the z's. And we can scroll down until we find the value 1.65. So if we keep scrolling, we find the value 1.6. And we want to match that up with its 100th place position. So that's 0 0.05. And so then this value here, 0 0.95053, represents the value of 1.65. So that means that the area that falls to the left of 1.65 is 0 0.95053. So if we scroll back up, we know that this is equal to 0 0.95053. So right here, this is 0 0.95053. And that seems to make pretty good sense. That is quite a bit... Um, a, a large portion of the data. Now, if we look at the next example, it's asking, what is the probability that Z is greater than 1.65? Now, if we just go back to 1.65 on the table, the area isn't going to change. It's still going to be 0 0.95053. So we know that that's not the correct answer for this problem because if we shade in the region that is greater than 1.65, we can see that that is a pretty small region and it's definitely less than 0.5. So how do we find the upper area of the standard normal distribution, well, we just have to subtract off the lower area. Because remember, all the area under the curve is going to be 1. So 1 minus 0 0.95053, so this will be the complement, is then equal to 0 0.04947. And that seems like a reasonable answer or a reasonable proportion for the area that is above 1.65. Okay, that's why drawing the distribution really helps when looking at the values in the table. All right, so now let's, let's go ahead and remove some of this stuff and consider what is the area that falls below zero in the standard normal distribution. Now, if we draw this on our table, right here, and we shade in the region, then it, the answer should be pretty obvious. It should be equal to 0 0.5. Now let's go ahead and look this up on the table. So if we scroll down and we look for the value 0, something I want you to notice is how over here all these z-scores are negative, 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 and all the areas over here are less than 0.5 all the way until we get to zero. Now the table does something kind of silly and it, and it gives us this negative 0, 0.0. Well, essentially all that is is that this place here will be a negative 0, 0.01. So there's not really a negative zero value, it's just zero. So 0, 0.0 right here, right here is equal to 0. 0.5. So all the values, so all the negative values will always have a proportion that's less than 0.5, whereas positive values, so values that are greater than zero, will all 
have values that are greater than 0.5. So that's something to keep in mind when you're doing any sort of calculation with the standard normal table. All right, so the next example here is the probability that z is less than negative 2.30. Now going with the same logic that we just talked about, we should know that the area should be less than 0.5 because it's a negative z score. So if we look right here, it's going to be right there about negative 2.3 and we shade in the region to the left because it's asking for less than this is going to be a very small proportion. It doesn't look like it'll be much. So let's go ahead and find the value on our table. So again, go down, scroll down with your Z's until you get to negative 2.3. Well, the hundreds place in this case is just zero. So we have negative 2.3 and we match it up with the hundreds place, which is zero, which is equal to 0 0.01072. So the area that falls below a z-score of negative 2.30 is then equal to 0 0.01072 from the standard normal table. And lastly, the last example that we'll do, let's go ahead and get rid of this, is what is the probability z is greater than 5.68? So for z to be greater than 5.68, that means that, let's go ahead and draw a couple more distributions out here it's going to be right out here, so 5.68. Now remember the, the normal distributions have a span of negative infinity to positive infinity, so these tails keep going out forever. However, the area that's under those tails is really small once we get anywhere past four, and really past five is going to be really small. So the area past 5.68 is going to be out here very, 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 very small. So if we look on the table, we want to know the probability that z is greater than 5.68. We look for the z-score, 5.68, and we can see that we don't even get to 5.6 on the table. We only get to 3.9 and then 9. So the last value on our table is actually 3.99, and the area that's less than that is 0.999. Think one more nine, seven. So four nines and a seven. So basically, we can't even get the exact probability of this, but it's going to be so small that it won't necessarily matter. So basically, we have one, the probability of z greater than 1.568 is one minus 0 0.99997, which is equal to 0. 0.00003. And it's actually even less than this because our value is bigger than 3.99. So the, the area that is more extreme than 3.99 is 0 0.00003, but the area that is more extreme than 5.68 is even less than that. But the thing is, is that it gets so small that at this point, the table is a little bit imperfect, but it won't matter so much. So if we want to get an exact value of this, then we can use software. Otherwise, we can just use the table. All right, hopefully this video helped you understand how we can use the standard normal distribution table to find proportions and probabilities for z-scores.